Coming up on Sportbox, uh, it's the rise of the robots. We'll speak to a company run by millennials carving out a private investment firm by investing in AI and robotics. That's coming up. to Scorebox, everyone. A clutch of next generation leaders are investing in next generation technology. Malaysia-based RHL Ventures has been pumping money into AI-enabled startups worth almost $100 million. It's looking to invest in companies that are focused around deep technology and artificial intelligence. Raja Hamza Abidin is with us now, a managing partner at RHL Ventures. Hamza, lovely to see you. Thank you for your time today. Tell us, what is your next investment? We are looking to a lot of different investment opportunities across Southeast Asia, whether it's from um, transport in a transportation space, whether it's in manufacturing. We are seeing AI being used as an enabler in a lot of uh, opportunities, whether it's from facial sensing, helping drive autonomous vehicles, helping improve safety standards, whether using facial recognition to increase um, the usability of fashion. So we're seeing AI across multiple industries, and I find that it's a very exciting space out there. Why AI? Why automation? Because the sense that I get when you consider how venture capital is deploying funding, it's to new economy, it's to the sharing economy, it's to e-commerce, there's a lot of potential growth there. So I'm just curious, what makes AI stand out in your mind? Because not many people, apart from you, are talking about it. So there's been some detractors of AI. Elon has talked about how AI can be dangerous. But what I find is that AI can be used as an enabler for traditional industries to become more productive. I give a good example. Um, one of the largest companies in Malaysia is called Top Glove, and they are the largest producer of rubber gloves globally. They employ about 7,000 foreign workers. In Malaysia as a whole, we have about 3 million foreign workers. What this enables is that by using robots, by using um, sensors, AIB sensors to help improve, improve their manufacturing capabilities, this helps reduce the dependency of, on foreign workers. This, this helps upscale um, Malaysian workers uh, um, to, uh, to become more productive, to go to higher earning jobs. So I find that we have a lot of opportunities that we can use AI to disrupt a lot of traditional businesses in Malaysia and across the whole of Southeast Asia. How do you see the challenges and the risks here? Because this is still an industry in its relative infancy. And then you have the political issues of job losses, that disruption, as you describe it, in AI involves in traditional industries. How do you get around that? And how do you sell your message amid that political tension that AI is creating? The answer is quite simple. AI brings productivity. And if you look at, I give an easy example, Malaysia, 25% of manufacturing, 25% um, of GDP comes from manufacturing. Man what manufacturing needs is a growth in productivity. It's already grown um, by about 6% in Q1 of 2017. And if, you, if you, you can leverage AI to help increase productivity, this will just bring more growth to the system. What this means is that workers will get higher pay because they are becoming more productive. Companies get higher profits, which enable them to funnel either dividends to their stock um, stockholders or even as bonuses to their employees. So I find so that... So this isn't just about job losses. This means moving up the value chain. Exactly. Yes. And this is what all countries across Southeast Asia are trying to do. They're trying to bring in more automation. They're trying to help upskill their workforce from, let's say, earning $3,000 before. They can earn $5,000 with a, with a, with on a higher paying job because of AI, because how they leverage AI to enable to enable them to become more productive. I've got to ask you, Hamza, about uh, valuations because yep. we've seen new economy valuations, sharing economy valuations at really bonkers levels. Is the same thing happening with AI and automation or I I if it is an industry that's just getting started, is it uh, relatively reasonably priced? So when we, when we, re we review businesses, we look at fundamentals, we look at the cash flow, we also look at the potential that they have. And I do admit, in certain cases where valuations can, it's across all businesses in a new economy where valuations are, how to say, out of whack. But it's all about finding the right businesses, finding the right fundamentals to put a value on, and also um, finding a right value to those companies. For instance, we have looked at opportunities across either ride sharing, 
leveraging AI for ride sharing, leveraging AI for facial detection. But in the end, even across all those businesses, what we find is that there's always a growth to that company that we find that we can value. And that's how we, how we actually value those companies. And for us, it's quite simple. If those companies don't make sense from a valuation perspective, we stay out. We have to be very disciplined to enable our, uh, ourselves to make money. So in the end, we are very systematic in the way we do these valuations. Admit that if there's a high growth that we can price in because they leverage AI, we, we will try to sensitize that growth. But in the end, we will invest in what we feel comfortable in. Hamza, we'll leave it there. Pleasure talking to you today. Thank, Thank you, you very much country. indeed for your time today. Uh, Raja Hamza Abidin there, managing partner at RHL Ventures. Coming up